Hey, welcome back to the Out of Spec Podcast. I'm your host, Jordan Schieffer, joined by a very special and recurring guest, Out of Spec Dave. Dave Connor, Kyle's dad, Tesla slash EV slash car enthusiast, all the things. Uh, how are you doing, Dave? <laughs> I'm, I'm great. It's Friday. You got to love Fridays, right? You know, uh, yeah. you know thanks for having me on. I, I, I enjoy these, these uh, you know, meeting like this, Jordan. We've got to stop meeting like this or continue. I'm not sure which. But yeah, no, uh, yeah. what, what's on your mind today? I know you wanted to pick my brain about a couple of different things. Yeah. So topic wise today, I think we should focus on the Tesla service experience and really what that means and some of our personal experiences, uh, okay. because we've we both had various things happen, um, especially some recently. Um, but I guess really quick, maybe we should start with just what how the service is in general, um, like how they set it up, like how you even create an appointment. Um, Cause that's kind of a learning curve. A lot of people are dealing with uh, And I've been um, dating someone that's like got a model Y a couple of months ago. And mm -hmm. that was kind of a learning curve itself is like, okay, coming up on wanting to do the first service appointment. What does that mean? She kind of assumed like, or had heard that people that Tesla just sends out technicians to your house. Like basically she heard what they did years ago when they had far fewer cars on the road and can make it very, very specific to each person. Now, right. especially with three and Y being such volume sellers, a lot of it really is going to Tesla service centers and setting that up. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't really know what the ratio is now. I can, I guess it, I think it depends on, I, I think it depends on what it is that you're having done. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you, I actually, this is an extremely timely topic for me because um, you know, I, I've got this 2021 Model S refresh that I just mm -hmm. recently bought. And uh, the only thing really wrong with the car was the right rear door handle. Um, you know how the, how on the Model S, the door handles, they, they come pop out. out. Yeah, um, they pop out. This one was sticky. But let me take a step back because you asked about like, how does one go about making a service appointment? And, and it's kind of different, right? Because in this day and age, everything is done on the app with Tesla. And, and actually, it's been that way for a long time. I remember in the early days, I used to speak to people. Um, maybe you can still do that. But everything is, is on the app. If you try to call Tesla, <laughs> they it's like, you know, it's like this, it's like this endless loop that keeps pushing you back to, um, you know, the app. So originally I, I kind of, I didn't really like that, but, but what I would say is once I put in what it was that I needed to have done, um, the communication, it gets, well, you know what it is, is you know that it gets in their system. Mm -hmm. You can see the status of it. You can see questions that are coming back to you from service advisors. And the interaction is is actually, um, you know, it doesn't go into a black hole. There's communication. There's, hey, by the way, your your appointment's coming up. Um, but I, I'll tell you, I have, I have sort of the tale of two cities here. Um, a good <laughs> experience with this and a bad experience. No, I don't want to say bad, but, you know, not a great experience. But... Yeah. Prior to this car, I had bought a 2018 Model S. Uh, it was a 100D. And I, I was, my wife was down in Florida. I bought the car from an Infinity dealer, which I would, I would suggest people be careful <laughs> about buying Teslas, especially if you send your wife to pick up the car. So, you know, I took delivery of her GV60 up here, and that was flawless, you know, mm -hmm. from, a, from a Genesis dealer. She took delivery of, of the uh, Tesla and thought it was flawless. They were very nice. But when she called me on the way home and she said, hey, Dave, you know, I used to remember you could actually get maps in the car. And like, I don't see any maps. I'm like, honey, all you got to do is put in the address and it can't be any easier. She's like, <laughs> it, it says maps are not available. And so um, finally, w w she did a FaceTime after driving home from Miami you know, all the way over to the West Coast. And and I looked at the screen and I, I saw that the car had not been connected to Tesla to like their central servers in 10 months. Wow. It was like, it was running on some... <laughs> ancient you know 1962 version software and uh <laughs> it was not connected to any kind of network it had mm -hmm. no maps it was completely the car worked fine but it was completely dead so i said uh oh i gotta get it i gotta get this thing serviced and and so that's when i had my first experience with making a, an appointment at the uh, fort myers service center mm 
Mm. And I made it for a Saturday morning, again, on the app. And I flew in on a Friday. Mm. And so I said, you know what? I'm here now. Let me drive over to the service center. And um, and see if I could get them to take a look at my car. At least then I can drive it home to Marco Island and bring it back and have maps. So I walked in and the service center was slammed. And I said, listen, I'm going to be here tomorrow and and um, for service. And I said, is there any way you guys can t- take a quick look at my car? Because the cell service isn't working. And and, you know, he basically said, you're you're kind of hosed. And then he said to me, oh, by the way, you're coming here tomorrow to have our technicians look at your cell, uh, you know, the cell connectivity. And I said, yeah, that's what I put in the system. He goes, oh, we got a skeleton crew on Saturdays. They only do things like tire changes and wiper blades. And so I would re- not recommend you come back here tomorrow. Um, I'm so happy I was I was unable. I, I, I saved you from wasting your day. And I thought about that. And I was like. This guy thinks that he did me a favor by telling me that the service appointment that I specifically put in, what it was I wanted and needed, that was confirmed, he's telling me not to show up because they don't have the personnel to do it. So, anyway, I, um, on the way home, I don't know what happened, but I decided to throw a hotspot off my phone, mm-hmm. and somehow my car connected to you know to the wi-fi yep. and that sort of like you know sometimes when you kick the tire they say the old saying you kick the tire yeah so by connecting the car to the hotspot, it was able to it it woke the car up i got a software release and ever since then the car worked fine and the oh. cell the cell kicked in i didn't need a new modem I, everything worked and 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 i thought to myself you know the guy could have at least come out to the parking lot and maybe had tried that or tried something to help me along. But so I I was, I was pretty bummed out about the Tesla service experience that I had. So I'll stop there and I'll let you tell your most recent Tesla service. (laughs) And then if it's okay, I want to take it back and, and sort of explain what happened today. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm sort of happy with what happened today, but why don't you go ahead and tell me what, you know, what was your, your Tesla experience with service? Yeah. Well, I guess a quick comment on yours, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. I think I've seen a lot of growing pains through Tesla because like I mentioned, I think early on it was, you know, on one hand, you're an early adopter for an early car. So you have pains with that, but then again, they have, they're trying to take care of the early adopters. So the delivery experience, the service experience was very personal and like luxury feeling. Cause it was a luxury sedan. Um, now, and, you know, in the last few years, growing pains, especially with 3 and Y, have caused a lot of shifts. And I'm sure that extends to how they had a skeleton crew. And it's hard to, yeah, it's like I'm sure they're figuring out the quirks with that. Um, as far as my experience, you know, with the recent plaid incident, as we call it, the plaid incident, um, <laughs> that was an interesting, you know, it was a first time for me working with Tesla. And it was interesting because basically Kyle wanted or tried to invite me to be a driver on the app and it never worked for some reason that just did not function. Um, so I basically had no access to the car through the app. So Kyle had to make the service appointment. Um, but then I kind of handled all the communication, which is tricky because they do send all the notifications through the app. So there's a lot of times where Kyle or Alyssa and Kyle was in Europe for quite a bit of this. Um, Mm -hmm. they would basically send me a quick, screenshot of something tesla had sent them um even though i kind of asked tesla to just do phone calls for the most part and they did intermittently it was like every other time they reached out they did a phone call and it seemed like they had my number correctly in there um but yeah it's funny um you know some people i think for most people it's like yeah it's hard to get a hold of them hard to talk to them on the phone maybe i lucked out but literally my first conversation with this representative Um, He said, hey, by the way, here's my direct line. That's, you know, I've experienced that too, Jordan. I think what happens is sometimes, I I don't know if that's corporate policy that they Mm -hmm. do that, but I like the fact that they don't, you know, some companies will say you're not allowed to call people back. Mm -hmm. And and Tesla doesn't seem to clamp down on that because, you know, like the, 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 I've had people do that. uh, Service advisors call me as well. And I've had very good service, you know, just in other Teslas that I've owned over the years. Um, so that's good that they they were communicating with you like that. Yeah. So that was pretty flawless. And 
great um so yeah i guess shout out to toby i think is his name that <laughs> kyle and i have mentioned him on a few podcasts and videos but he's been excellent with communication mm-hmm. um and it was kind of a challenging circumstances to navigate because it's like involving insurance and tesla and then tesla couldn't do everything because the wheels on the car were from martian wheels drew's company and also tesla in loveland right by fort collins doesn't do any body work so if there was body work needing to be done they work with a separate body shop it's just a lot of moving pieces but um toby was super communicative and honestly i wish the insurance agent was as good as toby because from my side basically tesla was the smooth part of this whole process the challenge was working with the insurance agent and almost like just trying to help him do his you job say the, you, are you talking about the adjuster um i guess he was the agent kind of assigned to the whole thing so it's like every communication's okay. been through him uh, I I, and, uh, separately an adjuster did go out and i heard that went well although the, i was never communicated that it happened right. or that it was finished yeah um, but from tesla's side I feel like we had a lot of solid experience and uh, a little bit of communication misses, but that's really, I don't want to blame Tesla. I think that's really to blame the fact that Listen, it's a, it's Kyle's a, phone and me. Yeah, I, I get that. <laughs> and you know, what was, what was so funny was I, I was actually, um, I, I was shocked how quickly Kyle's plaid got fixed. Mm-hmm. And then someone, I don't know if it was you or Kyle mentioned to me, that um, they had put it up on the lift and probably were afraid to put it back down off the lift. They're like, hey, listen, the only way we can free up this bay is to fix this damn thing, right? So I was yeah. like, you know, that's 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 a technique I hadn't tried before. Make sure your car just, whatever reason, it can't actually sit on its own on the floor or in a yeah. parking lot somewhere. But, um, you know, I was, I was actually very happy with how quickly Tesla fixed, um, you know. Look, at the end of the day, you can't you can't generalize and say the word Tesla and say, here's the experience you're going to get. I, I think that they have created a very efficient, um, highly technologically sort of advanced, you know, from a communication standpoint, infrastructure mm-hmm. support mechanism. But then again, there's people behind this. Right. And yeah. and so, you know, you can you, you might get some people that are in the right mood or in the wrong mood or what have you. But in general, over the years, I, I've actually been very happy with Tesla service and mm-hmm. their efficiency of, of doing it. And, and um, you know, so this uh, when, you know, when I when I had this this situation with my door handle, which I'm happy to jump to. But I, I before I do just want to see, did did you have any other comments or thoughts from from your experience, um, Jordan, before we jump on to what I went through today? No, yeah. I mean, really, just to sum it up, I think it was better than I expected. And yeah, we weren't affected by crazy part shortages. I think mostly because everything Tesla had to work on was underlying suspension components, not some of the more tricky things to find. Because um, mm-hmm. I've heard issues of people having their Teslas in for service for a long time, um, or even having to bring it back when a part does come in stock. We had no issues or shortages, which is why it was fixed so quickly. Yeah. Um, so, all that, yeah, all to be said, it was solid. It's, it is hard when you have companies that big. You know, I worked for Apple for a number of years, and someone can have a bad experience and attribute it to the whole company. And it's, you right. really have to take it pretty case by case. Um, yeah. It's not like going to a mom and pop restaurant and having a horrible experience and never going back. <laughs> right. I, I actually, uh, you know, I've gotten used to the approach from Tesla over the years for someone who's new to it. It sure is, it sure is a lot to, to digest. Um, it's sort of that, that one step removed from the personal touch, but then all of a sudden you get some guy who calls you back and then like, Whoa, they're super communicative. So anyway, so what I did was I, I had been meaning, I thought this door handle thing, you know, the, the Model S door handles are notoriously bad. They, <laughs> they, you know, they, they, they come out. I had one, I, my, my, my 100 D, um, I, I would hear this buzzing noise in the car. And I was like, that's not part of, you know, Lizzo's about damn time song. What is this? You know, what is that buzzing noise? And then I'd look at my rear view mirror or my side view mirror. And I would see, even though the car was locked, I would see that the door handle was out. And and I noticed that the sound, you know how you can make fart mode go in any speaker, you know, whichever one you want. 
the sound was coming from the right from the left rear speaker the same as the door handle being out hmm. and what was happening was the door handle was just getting stuck and it was creating probably a drain on the battery that had I not been careful about every time I locked the car. That was on my 100D. I also had a 2013 uh, P85 Plus years ago. Oh, yeah. So I had two door handles go bad on me. And so it was really funny when I told Kathy to when she went to pick up the, the 100D from the Infinity dealer in Miami, I said, whatever you do check the door handles, make sure the door handles work. Right. And yep. so she did. And, and it's like, okay, all four door handles work. Got her home a week later, door handle didn't work. So I was like, Oh <laughs> man, here we go. So now I get all excited, right? I'm getting the new model S refresh, the 2021, the one with the yoke. And, and, you know, of course I, I all the door handles worked when I picked it up from Carvana. Um, actually not Carvana from, uh, CarMax. Oh yeah. And, but but one, I, I started after a couple of days, one started to feel a little sticky, but I didn't worry about it because it's under warranty, right? So so I put in a request to uh, have the door handle looked at. It's the right, right rear passenger door handle. And, um, you know, I, I, about a week and a half ago, they said Saturday morning appointment. Actually, it was a pretty big window from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. for tomorrow, Saturday. And I was like, ah, oh, that's, you know, that could potentially kill my day because I got the new Martian MW05 wheels. I want to put those oh, yeah. on and do a range test compared to, you know, the T-Sport line 20s um, to that. And I've got some things I got to do. But in any event, I um, all of a sudden I got a call today about 10 o'clock. Hey, Dave, this is uh, this is Nate from Tesla service. Uh, I'm going to be down in Norwalk today. Can I come by and and visit you and fix your fix your door? I said, well, Nate, I'm actually at work in Stanford. Um, he goes, well, I can come there. I said, okay, well, my car's nice. in the parking garage here. So he said, I'll tell you what, I'll text you when I'm 10 minutes out. And if you could just come down and, and um, you know, kind of guide me as to where your car is, that, that would be a big help. So what I did was I he texted me. I went outside. I met him out on the street on Broad Street in Stanford. I jumped in his Tesla. And by the way, he had a Model S, 100, 100 uh, not a 100, a, a new Model S long range refresh um, in white, just like my car, <laughs> except on the side of it, it said Tesla service. Nice. So he was up by Yukon down the road and and I was on the phone with him and he's like, Dave, I don't, I don't see where you're at. I said, oh, I know where you, I know it's East Broad Street, not West Broad Street. So as he's talking to me, some guy stops him, like some random dude walks up to him and says, hey, are you here to fix my car? And it's like, you know, so apparently someone else had a, uh, uh, um, <laughs> what do they call those guys? Rovers, I think. I don't know if they call them rovers, but. Yeah, I'm not sure. This remote guy was, was out there. Anyway, he came in. And Jordan, I kid you not, this guy was all business. I made a video. I said, do you mind if I make a video? I, you know, he, I said, I'm not going to like ask you questions and all that, but just do your thing and I'll make a video in the background, just kind of watching what you did. This guy worked in the Marines for, I think it was six years as a mechanic. And then he worked, uh, he worked on diesel engines for six years. And now he's working for Tesla. And he said, Dave, Fixing these things is easy, you know, like this, <laughs> this is a piece of cake. And this guy was super efficient, super clean, super polite. Um, I'll have a video up on out of spec Dave, probably Sunday morning on this whole experience. But, um, you know, he fixed the door, I think in under 30 minutes. Wow. And, um, and it works fine. Now he had to take the whole door apart. He, he had not done one yet on, on a rear door. He had done one on a refresh rear door. He had done one on a, on a front door, but in the older cars, the non refresh cars, you didn't have to take the window and the window regulator out in order to actually replace the door handle. But on the new refreshes, he's like, ah, oh, I guess I, I got to do this, but he had a good attitude he was super, super efficient. He did a great job. And I, I was just, I mean, the fact that he came to me, he mm -hmm. called me, he communicated with me, was totally open about what he was doing, didn't really have any issues with it. Great guy, very polite, very professional. And he got the job done in, in under 30 minutes and it works fine now. 
Yep. I'm happy, Jordan. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, so anyway, that's uh, that's my story for today. I can't believe you asked me to talk about <laughs> Tesla service today because that just happened today. And you, had, yeah. it was supposed to happen tomorrow. And now because he called me up, I have uh, my whole day is free tomorrow. So I'm good. I'm really happy. That's awesome. Yeah. No, I think it's good to share stories on both regards because there's going to be rough and great seamless experiences and it's good to talk about both and kind of validate the experiences everyone has across the board because on the bottom line is they are a big company with a lot of people and it's very person dependent i mean your experience today could have been much worse if he was kind of yeah. just a jerk and annoying even yeah. though he all i, all I can do is exactly all i can do jordan is tell you what i experienced yeah um, i'm sure you know for every person that watches this may go hey i had a good experience there may be three people that have had terrible experiences or maybe three people that have had great experiences all i wanted to do was you know when you called me about this i was like yeah this is great timing let's talk about it um you know it is what it is right i, I yeah. today was a good day with respect to my oh i got one other thing to tell you mm -hmm. You know these yokes. Um, <laughs> Boy, do so I. I, I! You know, <laughs> I just released a video today on, on with my wife Kathy and my and my dog, um, our main road trip. And one of the things that I, I noticed is the yoke, the top of the yoke. The it's not leather, but I, I don't know if you can see this here, but it's it's actually the top oh. of the yoke. Where is it? Where can you see that there? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. It's peeling. Yep. Right. And, and so, and so <laughs> Kyle, Kyle told me that his car, which is, which has got far less mileage on it than my car is doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I said to Nate, I said, Hey, Nate, you know, is this something Tesla is fixing? He goes, Oh yeah, I've been doing a bunch of them. Is it just put it into the app? I'll probably be the guy to come out and, and fix the wheel for you. He said, it's a hundred percent covered under, under warranty. And he said, I said, that's great. He said, I said, how long will it take to fix it? He goes, I could probably do, do that in about five minutes. Wow. I was like, excellent. So he said, go <laughs> into the app and, and I'm going to get a brand new yoke. So yep. I, you know, look for, for cars as expensive as it is, it's crazy that, you know, this is happening, but I, I don't really think you can blame Tesla. You can you can you could blame Tesla if they weren't fixing the problem yeah. because things will always happen, right? You know, you've got suppliers and different issues or what have you. Um, I did ask him if he knew that if they were just replacing it with the existing yoke that will do the same thing within six months. He said he didn't know if they had actually made any manufacturing adjustments to prevent that from happening again. But mm -hmm. listen. You know, maybe in a week and a half, you can call me back and ask me how my yoke replacement went. I'm going to time the guy. When he shows up, I'm I'm hitting the stopwatch. I want to say, all right, you said five minutes. Let's see if you can beat that clock, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that's a good story. And, um, you know, we're running up on time here. But I think that's this okay. is a good thing to kind of cyclically talk about because – that's what people want to know is how how is Tesla ownership, how was it? And we have a lot of stories on how it was, but how is it continuing to be as Tesla continues to be the biggest electric car manufacturer for now? And how are they comparing to other ones? So in the future, we'll kind of compare service experiences across brands because we're kind of experiencing Rivian and stuff now too. So there's a lot to get into, but I think these fun, short, topical episodes kind of help highlight the good and the bad that we run yeah. into every day. Well, today I'm happy, Jordan. You got me on a good day. So, um, <laughs> hey, uh, and, and thanks for reaching out. I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Sounds great. Thanks, Dave.